Hi, welcome to Time Valley Motorhomes. I'm Callum and this is the handover of the Swift Edge 486. So as we start the walk round on the driver's side of the motorhome first, the first point you get is your fresh water intake. So this is where you will require a hose pipe and some hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just a brass tap on site. When you arrive on your site, you'd normally drive in and fill your water up first before being allocated a pitch. Swift key, that goes in there and it means you can unlock the lockable cap. Removes flat end of the hose into the vehicle, other end attached to the tap and start filling. You can look on board the control panel on how full the fresh water tank is or you can just simply wait until it overflows. Once it overflows, this indicates that the tank is full. Just down here you've got your water drain so you've got one fresh water drain which is here and one waste water drain which is here as well so the waste you just open the tap and drain off the waste water and allow it out the van you don't want to be driving around with the added weight of waste water because it's the water is dirty there's nothing more you can do with it it's just going to impact the payload and the weight of the vehicle so on the way out of your site drive over the grid and allow the water out then when you drive home just leave the tap open and it will rock any loose water out of the vehicle in the winter make sure both taps are left open and drained off so no water can sit in the fresh water tank or the wastewater tank and cause any damage coming here you do have your toilet cassette so that lifts up and the cassette will slide out You'll then be able to carry it to the handle on the front or you can bring the wheels up and wheel it to the waste disposal point which is normally beside your toilet and shower block on site and then to empty remove the grey cap of the spout pop that to one side for the moment start to tip and as you start to tip press the orange button at the back of the cassette here allows a bit of air in stops the glugging and pour the contents of the cassette out once you've done that, there is normally a tap, so if you put a small amount of water in, give it a rinse, tip out again, and we're going in with a cap full of liquid, which can either be green or blue, depending on the site's regulations, whether they want the green, which is a little bit more environmentally friendly now. A cap full of liquid into here, and it's good to go back into the motor hole. And then it simply just pushes in, and it'll click into place. LPG, so liquid petroleum gas. This is your gas locker. I've got my propane gas bottle on as a test bottle to show you equipment working. So it'll take, it runs off propane, not butane. You can get two bottles in there, so you can get a spare bottle as a reserve at the back. Put the strap round the collar of the bottle before you tighten the pigtail on, which is this pipe here, and strap the bottle in so it's nice and safe and secure. Then to connect this pigtail, it's left to tighten right to loosen so it's opposite ways with it being gas and it is just a hand tightened pigtail so no need for a spanner once you've hand tightened it you can turn the bottle on making sure that you turn the bottle off before you start traveling and then you do have a reset button on the regulator here which is just in the middle so if that ever pops out just push and hold for 10 seconds and it'll do a reset this is a crash valve so if you forgot to turn your gas off and you did drive and anything did happen and you were crashed into or involved in a collision this would stop the sether of gas because it's motion detected come around the back of the van You've got your reversing sensors on the bottom there, followed by three bikes on the dual bike rack. So pull that down. These will move depending on how big your bike is. So whether it's a kid's bike or an adult bike, you'll be able to unstrap the strap there, put the wheels into the chocks and strap through the spokes to tie the bike down. First, second and third bikes and towards the crossbars. Then we do recommend that you put some sort of bike lock around the bikes just to keep them nice and safe and secure when you're traveling and leaving the van unattended. Coming around this side, you've got your flue for your boiler. So the boiler works on both gas and electric, but just make sure this is always obstruction free because it does get warm 
more so when operating on gas than electric. Two fridge vents, Fiemma F45 awning, awning light. Your step isn't electric, it's a manual step on this model. So what you've got to do is just push it in and bring it out. So always remember to put the step in before you start driving because it won't automatically retract. To hook the vehicle up if you're charging it at home or you were on a site, to get your hooper blades, lift the collar, hook the motor home up first, always hook the vehicle up first then the site and do it in reverse order so that you're never walking around with a live lead in hand. At the door of the passenger door you do have your diesel filler which is a lockable diesel cap and opens with the main fade the cattle key. Opening the door you'll find your tyre pressures. So 5 bar which is 72.3 psi at the front and 5.5 bar on the back which is 79.5. Underneath the passenger seat is your tool kit which includes a jack and a brace and a tow knife. Underneath this compartment in the floor is where the engine battery lives. It's not underneath the bonnet, it's underneath the floor on this vehicle. So if you ever need to change your battery or put a charger on, just lift that panel up and your bonnet releases here. Underneath here you've got your fluids, so all your fluids are to to the left hand side underneath the driver's steering wheel so you've got your screen wash which is the main one you're going to need three tabs that lifts off on the scuttling you can fill your power steering fluid and your coolant you've got a brake fluid oil filler and oil dipstick for checking your levels and then if you ever need to jump start the vehicle this is your earthen point so black clip on there fuel filter there's a cover that goes over here if you pop your key in and just lift that up that's your positive for your red clip for giving or receiving a jump start so above the habitation door you've got your swift control panel so you can turn it on and off here it tells you the wastewater and the fresh water readings on the side it tells you that the leisure battery is your active battery it's charging the time and that you've got the heat and all the hot water on currently so when you select that on your truma INET ready control panel, which I'll get on to on a moment how that works. This will come up on the Swifts. Coming down the side, you've got your own light, your dimmer light, so you can just press and hold and dim them down. You've got your master switch for your lights, and they all are individually switched around the vehicle. And you've got your pump, making sure that you've got enough fresh on board, you can turn your pump on. Going up and down, you can adjust the dimmer level, the internal temperature, which is 25.3 degrees on board. That is the limit. So that's currently what's being drawn off 1.4 amps. 13.6 volts is in the leisure battery, but that's a false reading because the charger is involved because we're hooked up. Take the hookup out to get a true reading of the leisure battery. And it says that the tank heaters there are off. If you want to turn them on, you would just press here. This middle one there will turn them on and off. The tank heaters you will use in the winter if it's going to freeze overnight or it's going to get really cold. Pop them on before you go to bed and it will stop the water from freezing. Select battery always wants to be the leisure battery. So you don't want the you don't want the vehicle battery selected. You want the leisure battery selected because that is the additional battery that the motorhome has as the auxiliary battery. And you don't want to flatten your battery, start the van, and then not be able to drive anywhere because you've selected the van battery instead of the leisure battery. Solar power is currently bringing nothing in. It'll bring nothing in um, when hooked up if a solar panel is fitted because the hookup is the truer, bigger voltage than a solar panel could ever supply. This indicates that your tank heaters are on this little diagram here. It's very self-explanatory. It looks like a little thermostat in a tank. Vehicle battery. And then you're back to the start of the leisure battery charge. So to operate your digital Truma CP control panel, to turn the system on and off, you press and hold to turn it off, press it once to turn it on and it'll come on 
and then to get into the menu you just press it once you'll notice you've got a thermometer with it in a van flashing at the top corner if you press enter this is how hot you want your vehicle so you've got all the way off in the summer when you don't want the heating or you've got all the way to 30 degrees in the winter when it's very cold so once you're happy so if we say 27 degrees there that's how hot i want the inside of the motorhome to be i'd press enter and that'll save that at 27 degrees now you've got a thermometer in some water this is how hot you want your water so if you don't have any water on board you'd have it on off 40 degrees for showering 60 degrees for doing your dishes but it's entirely up to yourself how hot you want your water or you've got boost which will turn off your heating and prioritize your water first but for this we'll just say 60 degrees because we want the heating to run along with the water next you've got what source you're heating the water and the vehicle off so you've got gas so make sure your gas bottle's on and it's turned on you've got mix one which is 750 watts of electric and gas you've got mix two which is 1850 watts of electric plus gas so you'd use mix two in the winter if you're away and it was really cold use a mix two will boost the vehicle up the temperature because you're using both sources together then you can turn it over to electric so you've got electric 750 watts el1 and you've got el2 which is 1850 watts of electric don't waste your gas if you're on a site unless you're away and it's really cold and you're using mix two for the first 10 15 minutes then allow electric to continue to heat the motor home and maintain the temperature because if you're on a site you've paid your site fees after all you'll not want to waste your gas then you've got your fan in the top right hand corner so eco or high or boost this is just a 12 volt assisted fan so eco will use less 12 volt high obviously uses more fan speed so it's going to use a little bit more 12 volt and boost uses full power on the fan which is going to use the most out of the 12 volt battery sleep with it on eco because it's a lot quieter than sleeping with it on anything else if you're going to sleep with the heating on in the winter you've got a timer so you can time the heating to come on and off just the once though clock in the middle and then spanner you can go all the way down to reset and to reset the control panel if you ever get a warning triangle in the middle reset preset click again and it will restart your control panel and then to turn off press and hold and it'll say off and it'll completely turn itself off in the kitchen you've got three gas burners which i've lit there so they're all working once you've had them on, if you allow them to cool before putting the glass lid down, otherwise there is a chance you could shatter the glass lid with the heat. Underneath, grill, and under the grill, So now I've changed my gas bottle after running out of gas. We now have one lit oven. If you ever need any parts for the oven, burners, anything to do with cooker knobs, anything like that, there's a sticker here, um, which has got the model number of the oven on. Just give us that or any other motorhome and caravan dealership and they should get you the right parts for this Fedford oven. Slide out, draw. Under here you do have just some service parts for electrics and things for a technician. Side out tray there, you can put an insert in there for a cutlery tray and some storage throughout. Pushing the handles in, you'll be able to open the overhead lockers and you've got your microwave plug there should you ever need to unplug that if it's causing any issues and that is a mains 800 watt microwave and then this one you've got which have been removed but you can tie down or take out 
One is a plate rack and this one is a cup rack so you can put your cups in and they do just go on here so you'll be able to tie them down but the last person has removed them because they've obviously packed it themselves. You've also got your hot water system so it's showing that your water system is working. This is on hot, I've had your boiler on for the last couple of hours heating the water up. And that is red hot as you can see the steam coming off the water there as well as your cold water working okay as well so it's all pressurizing with the water pump to operate the dometic fridge so the dometic fridge works off three sources it works off mains 240 volt which is when you hooked up it works off the 12 volt battery off the engine when traveling and it works off gas when you're while camping so you can choose which one you want so you can turn it on and off here and then you can pick the source. So if you were on a site, you would use mains, or if you were at home and you were pre-chilling it, you would use mains and connect the van to hook up. If you were on a, if you were wild camping, and you didn't have anything other than 12 volt and gas, you'd have to use your fridge off gas, and it'll self-ignite. You'll hear a ticking in the background, and then it'll stop, and then and it'll engulf the flame on the burner and start working on gas and then when you're traveling so if you've had it on gas or 240 volt and it's down at temperature you can put on a battery the battery is a feed for when you're traveling and it only works when the engine's running it's designed like a giant cool box really and it's just going to keep it at the same temperature it was at when departing so like i say if you're going if you're lucky enough to keep this at home hook it up a couple of days before put the fridge on put the shopping in the night before once you've had the fridge on for the day the day before you put the shopping in so it's nice and cold allow the shopping to get nice and cold and then you can travel with it on the battery and it's just going to keep it nice and at the same temperature really so just fr keep your shopping fresh when you travel when the engine's running once the engine's turned off you either need to go on to gas or you need to go on to mains if you've hooked the vehicle up mm -hmm. this is your temperature so one being the warmest and five being the coldest. Have it on all five in the summer when we're experiencing really hot temperatures like we have in the last couple of weeks. If not, in the winter you might just want to turn it down to one or two because sometimes it can be too strong but it will need to perform on its fullest in the summer when we're experiencing really hot temperatures. So anywhere over 20 degrees or so, have it on f full five. Sticker at the back of the fridge is all your details to do with your fridge if you ever need parts for your fridge. And then when you're not using it, you turn it off. Put your finger on this button here and push it in and pull these out and then rest the door on it. The door's nice and loose. Air can circulate in and out and it hasn't put the rubber seal against the frame. So clean it out, leave the door open so it doesn't form smells or mold inside the fridge when the vehicle is not in use. So in the back lounge on this model, you've got two bench seats, which form a double bed. So you just lift and slide both sections out. Just meet them in the middle. Pull the base cushions forward and put the backrests into the back. Or you can put the backrests in the middle, it's up to you. And there has formed a double bed but what i'd like to do is and what i'd advise is you turn everything upside down because you get the bull nose on the front you get the flat surface on the back to sleep on you can put a fitted sheet on and you can sleep on there and that is your back double bed to drain your boiler down in the winter it's very important that you do so because it holds 10 liters of water in here at any one time which is fed off your pump from your fresh tank at the front of the van so to drain it down, come in, no pump on, yellow toggle, lift it up, it will drain all 10 litres of water directly out underneath the van. So it'll just pull on the floor underneath the van, leave it up when you're not using it, and then when you come to reuse it, just click it down, fill the fresh water, put the pump on, go to the hot side of the tap, it will cough and splutter because this is empty and it's just pushing the air out as it's transferring the water into the boiler. Once you get a pressurized flow from here, and this is full, you'll get a pressurized flow out your tap and you're good to go. Do one tap, do them all, but remember to drain it down in the winter because if not, you could damage the boiler, which is very costly to repair because it's not covered under your warranty for frost damage, but everything else is. But frost damage, it's your responsibility to drain the motorhome down of water when packing away in the winter. 
So underneath the double dinette seat on this model, this is your freshwater tank. So outside there's a pipe, but it doesn't have a tap on. That's because the main plug is in the tank to drain the freshwater tank off. So all you need to do is remove the tap. On there you've got a plug. Pull it out and it'll drain your fresh water off. You do that if you're not using the vehicle or you are winterizing the van and you want to ensure that all the water is out of this tank so it doesn't freeze and cause any damage to the tank or the pipes. But if you're taking on a source of contaminated water, you may want to drain your fresh water tank out as well. You can pop some cleaner in here from time to time if you want to clean it. If you want to clean the tank, what I like to do and what I advise is you put your cleaner in, you fill it, you leave it in, take the vehicle for a drive, sloshes around the tank. Also, if you leave it in for like 24 hours, not just half an hour, it'll do a better job. And then all you need to do is rinse the tank out with a few tanks of pure fresh water after to remove the cleaner. Just located next to the boiler as well, you've got a green a blue and a red gas tap so you've got hob and oven fridge and your water heater so this is the gas supply from the main bottle to here and then it goes to each individual item so they're on if you have any problems with them you can isolate them by turning them by closing them like this so that's closed there open but these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually habitation serviced in the washroom We've got a separate shower curtain to cover the toilet when showering. But to operate the toilet, make sure the pump's on and press the blue button on the top of the toilet, which is your fresh water flush. So always put a little bit of water in the toilet before you use it. It helps lubricate the seal between the blade and the bottom of the toilet. And then before you think about using the toilet, you want to open that blade, otherwise it might get messy. So the blade here, stand at the right. Use the toilet, flush after use. If you've bought any pink liquid with the blue in the multi pack, now is the time to. It's not fed off a separate header tank for the toilet, so you can't put that anywhere in the vehicle. But what I would do is just put it in a small sprayer bottle. So much pink, so much water, spray the bowl, flush, and then once you finish using the toilet, close the blade. If this blade was to be left open and you wanted to get the cassette out the outside of the van, it will not come out with that blade open. It's got to be shut because it leaves the mechanism engaged from the cassette. When the cassette is full, you'll get a couple of green lights on the left hand side next to the diagram of the cassette. You've got space for your toilet race here. Your shower head is also your hand basin head. So you can pull that out and pop that up there when showering. But when winterizing, when you want to leave all your taps open, just unscrew the shower head from the tap, pull this out all the way and lie this in the shower tray. Any water in here will drain off and not freeze because you don't want to leave any water stuck in this pipe. And then when you're ready, when you're ready to use it as a hand basin, just push it in. Open the tap and push this button and you'll get a pressurised flow of water. Toilet cabinet underneath as well. It is heated in here. So if you've got any coats or anything and you've been caught in the rain, just hang them on hangers and hook them onto here, a little top tip. Hook them on there and it'll mean that they'll drip dry if you've been caught in the rain because it's the smallest place in the van. But if you want a bit of ventilation, you can push this button here and pull this back and open it with the fly screen on there. But make sure it's fully shut before you travel like all other skylights and windows. So directly behind the passenger seat, if you lift your bench seat up, your side facing bench seat, this is your EC600 power supply unit. So when you hook up, it works the, 12, the 240 volt as well as the 12 volt. So the 12 volt fuses are here. So it would be a good idea to carry some small selection of 12 volt fuses with you. Just in case one fuse does blow, you'll know when it blows because it lights up with a red light that indicates that it can't complete the circuit. And then you will just pick it out. Look in the middle there, you'll see that it is intact. 
and you'll be able to pop a new fuse in. But like when I've took the fuse out there, you've got a red light on now, which means that the fuse isn't there. So that would indicate that it had blown anyway. And then you can be able to push it back in and replenish the fuse. All the fuses are here with the ampage and what fuse does what. So if there's anything that's not working, it's normally a fuse. Start with that first. This side you've got your RCD and your MCB. So if the mains power wasn't working on the vehicle and you've hooked the van up, the best way to check if it's the motorhome or if it's where you're getting the power from is tripping the van. And to trip the van, just press the trip tester like at home. If it trips, you've got power. If it doesn't trip, you haven't got power. These will light up when 230 volt is detected for the charger, which charges your leisure battery from mains and the heating and hot water system, which works on mains 230 volt as well as gas. But this is the mains fused spur to the boiler. If you push up, it'll turn them off. And if you push in, it'll turn them on. But just leave them on only check if it's not working check here that you haven't knocked them and they've been pushed out or check the supply of mains 230 volt got some storage in here as well and then you've got a black button on the top which is a system shutdown button so if you're parking up for the winter and it's kind of like a battery isolating switch you can press here and it'll turn everything off so there'll be no 12 volts throughout the vehicle so when making your front double dinette area up into a double bed, you've got to lift the table off to fill the space in between the double dinette seats. So lift it off, press the button on the leg and fold the leg. Lift the cushion off because it's best to have one cushion off so you can locate the table into these runners. So you've got a set of runners on both sides and you need to locate and pop the table in like so you'll then be able to pop your cushions down and put them back into place and once the cushions are in you can use the infill cushions to fill this space so i'm going to put the infill cushions in and then i'll talk you through so this is how your bed assembles so the bench seat you would slide forward like the back the back rest goes in at the back the base cushion slides forward there's an infill cushion which is the longest one which doesn't fit here which goes there then there's another infill cushion which is a short one but wide which goes in here use a backrest from either side depending on which side you want to sleep on and there's a little square cushion which goes in the back because it's cut out for the seat belt frame put that in there and it'll stop the middle from collapsing and that is your double bed there's another additional infill cushion which is a long thin one which isn't used for the front it's used for the back bed to tighten the cushions up in the back should you want to in use it in the cupboard and your wardrobe should i say you've got your tv digital amplifier at the back so when the 12 volt system's on you'll get a green a blue light and you can amplify the signal should it be too weak or too strong you can try turn it up or turn it down feeling that you can adjust the aerial so loosen the nut off push it up tighten to keep the aerial higher than the van and use the toggle to direct the aerial but what i would do is look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing on your site point yours in a similar direction and always pull it in before you start traveling so the tv fitted in this vehicle by the previous owner is a polaroid mains 230 volt telly so you've got to be hooked up for it to work so connecting it to this socket it'll work when you connect the vehicle to mains using the remote you can turn it on There you are, the telly's on. You will have to retune this telly every time you move locations because it'll be picking up a different signal. So menu, install and retune, automatic channel, scan, retune. Digital aerial, so that's all you've got, yes. And it'll start and do a search and find as many channels as it can. However, if you are wanting to go wild camping, this telly is only mains, so it's not a 12 volt telly. So either you can do one or two things. You can replace the telly for a 12 volt telly, which will work on hookup and when you're wild camping as well, because you've always got 12 volt off a leisure battery. Or fitted in the cupboard here is a inverter. An inverter changes 12 volt to 230 volt, but it uses it quite quick. So just be careful that you don't drain your battery. 
because a full charge leisure battery will camp and if you use it correctly you'll last you three days however you've now got an inverter on there so that will probably take it down to two two days one and a half days depending on if you've got the telly on all the time so there's an extension that's click, connected from here to the side you need to take your, your telly plug out of the swift plugs and put in the extension and turn the inverter on here and you'll be able to invert 12 volt to 230 volt but never use the inverter when you're hooked up because you're going to double the charge through the back through the system so don't do that only use it when you're not hooked up because when you're hooked up you've already got 230 volt. there we are so the other double bed is in the luton which pulls down you've got a safety net which clips up if you're putting children up there underneath the mattress you've got the ladder which clips into the front here and you can push it up when you're traveling store extra clothing extra bed and anything light up there when travel traveling nothing too heavy you've got your silver screens up there at the moment so there you go on the press studs on the windscreen and on the sides on a night to black the cab out and then you can just push it up when you travel so you can get in and out of the cab more easily without banging your head